What is going on guys? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Of course the helicopter has to pass when I'm starting the video. Okay, so fresh battery and no helicopter. What is going on guys? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the airlift, kind of like maintenance. There isn't much to it, especially like in the warmer climate, but now that you know, I'm in the uh, East Coast, the Northeast Coast, so it does get cold here. It does snow, there's like, rain, sleet. Us guys on air suspension, we kind of have to keep a little bit more of maintenance. If you guys are like in like Southern, drier climates, you probably don't have to do this too often. But this is more geared towards the people that live in New York, Jersey, like Delaware, and up the Northeast Coast, or up North where it snows, rains a lot, and like there's just a bunch of bunch of crazy weather. Yeah, basically today's video is going to be about keeping your airlift management good how to drain the tank every once in a while you're gonna have to recalibrate the system it's just something that you're gonna have to do like right now every time i air up it's it's just gonna go up and then air out down to the, like, the right height that is it just needs to be recalibrated it does that every once in a while uh usually after like a couple of months i after a couple months, I do like to recalibrate just so that way it stays calibrated. I don't have to worry about it airing up or down slowly just in case I need to hop in and go. But this is more or less just kind of like the maintenance aspect of it. So let's go ahead and just take care of the maintenance and just take a look at the air suspension. Now, first things first is just going to be just a visual inspection of the bags. Like every once in a while, you're going to want to do this. You're gonna wanna inspect it. You're gonna wanna check the lines that are exposed. Let me go ahead and start the car again. And then let's just raise this bad boy up. And then let's pop the hood. Okay, so first things first, if you do have lines coming out from inside the car, chances are you're gonna need to go through the engine bay. So just take like a couple of minutes, just look at it, just do a visual inspection, make sure everything is nice. As you can see, my airline is right down there. Just take a look at it, make sure everything's good. You might want to spray it a little bit with water just to make sure that nothing is leaking. I already did that, I have no problems there coming up over here here's where i have the other airline and there's where it's going out it's the wheel well and if you need to turn the wheel take a look let me go ahead and close this because dry leaves hot air hot engine not a good idea the rears are going to be much easier to inspect but let's go ahead and do the front let's take a look look at it make sure nothing is blown make sure all the lines look good if you don't want to risk driving down and having a blown bag so just do like a visual inspection nothing too crazy just take a look at it turn the wheel both ways just make sure that it looks good make sure that you know nothing looks sus everything looks good everything looks fine then in the back come down usually most of the times you're gonna have the strut and then the bag or but I know that like when it comes to like Subarus, WRXs, STIs, the bag, the bag sleeve is actually on the strut itself, so it's gonna be a little bit harder to see. But let's go ahead and take a look. Everything looks fine, nothing looks out of the ordinary. Same thing on the other side. Everything looks good so far, so I don't really have to worry about lines since I do have them running all on the inside of the car that's something that i actually really wanted to do next thing i'm going to do is just air out and there we go we are aired out now we can go ahead let's shut this thing off so we don't kill the battery for the next thing that we're going to do and now what we are going to do is we're gonna go ahead and empty the tank. We're gonna empty the tank completely so that way we drain all the air in the system. This is gonna get a little bit messy, so you might wanna put on some gloves. You might wanna, you know, have a towel. You're, you're gonna need to have a towel in handy. Like, it gets real messy. So basically, I don't know if the camera can see, but you have this little thing right here. It's kind of like a, a tire valve. Then right here, you see that little pin. I would highly recommend getting the tool to, like, 
unscrew this so that way you can drain all the air at once rather than trying to like push this in and do it out that way but i don't have that tool so i'm gonna do it the the old-fashioned way and just push this in and you're gonna see it's gonna be really really messy you guys will see it it, it, it gets messy so as you can see all of that is all that built up condensation that is in the tank that the compressor does But you can see like it, it it gets messy it gets really messy it's all that water all that condensation oh that hurts that actually really hurts because it's so damn cold after like a certain point you're just gonna wanna hold that thing off. And then you can see now you're gonna be emptying the system and see where was it? Where was it? A piece of ice actually flew out. Cause this thing gets really, really, really cold. Like the line I'm pretty sure can and will freeze. But this is just part of the maintenance. You wanna do this especially in the colder climates you want to do this almost every week actually i recommend if you guys fill up every week once you get home just empty the tank just get all that air out because you're gonna you're gonna need to you're gonna need to it's like the, the water build up in this it yeah you don't you don't want any of your lines to freeze you don't want any of that that's the whole reason why you air out and do this to kind of like remove all the air in the system Chances are you're not going to remove all the water in the system, but if you can get some of that water out, some of that ice that builds up because this is cold. Remember that you are dealing with air. When you condense air with a compressor, you're going to get water. And then with water in cold climates, you're going to get ice. It doesn't just evaporate. You, this uh, it requires more maintenance whenever you whenever it gets into colder climates because you have more to deal with. You have the ice. Yeah, it's the possibility of ice, you have the possibility of things just freezing. And then also, if you air out every single day, that compressor is going to be running like crazy. It's going to build up all that condensation. It's going to build up the water, put it inside the tank. The water trap does help, but sometimes it's just not going to help enough. Car's off, everything is out of the system. So go ahead and start it up. And then at this point, now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna wait for the tank to fill up and then we're gonna air the car up and we're gonna leave it aired up. One thing that actually does help is getting air brake antifreeze and putting it in the system. That does help, but I don't have, I don't have any air brake antifreeze and I honestly, I have no idea where to get it. But that will definitely help. That will prevent the lines from freezing. That will prevent the lines from you know, blowing out. But it's it's winter. Chances are it's probably going to snow in the next couple of days. I know they're, they're, we're expecting rain, but snow is always a possibility. Or the temperature dropping is very, very likely overnight. So every time it gets cold, like this is the first season I am running air suspension. But I did a lot of research. Had a couple buddies help me out so i decided to make a video to help you guys out that are considering going on air suspension going from coilovers to air suspension is a lot more work it is a lot more things that you got to keep an eye out for it, there is a lot of things you have to do but that doesn't mean that it's not worth it i absolutely love air suspension it is just so cool to just be able to go somewhere park like if i'm gonna go to a restaurant park make sure it's like right in front of the window air out and then while i'm eating i get to look out the window and see people just looking at my car like oh my god that thing looks so cool it's 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 awesome like I, it, it's it's really cool like it, it, it is really cool and i appreciate all the love that i get like it's it's definitely different from what i'm used to like i'm always that quiet guy i still am that quiet guy if you guys were to meet me in person i am awkward as fuck even if you first start like if you dm me you gotta admit that i'm pretty fucking awkward so 
but I try to be cool with everyone. I appreciate everyone who's supporting me. I appreciate everyone who has criticism because that helps me build the person that I am. It will make me a better person later on in the future. What to do, what not to do, what to say, what not to say. I appreciate everyone because everybody has an impact on my life, whether whether you know it or not. Even you guys that are just watching and commenting, whether you're saying like, oh my God, I look so stupid. I'm like, okay. Like it just helps, it just helps me build my character. And I appreciate all the love and all the hate because it builds, it makes me stronger as a person and it makes me a be become a better man. I just appreciate every single one of you. you know, whether you like me or not, I appreciate every single one of you. All of you guys have an impact on my life. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna recalibrate the system. Like I said, it's something that you're gonna wanna do every once in a while. Just recalibrate the system, make sure everything is good, make sure everything is nice, make sure everything is like perfect, level. It's not gonna affect the ride height that you have now or the pressure that you have the car on. It's just gonna make it a little bit more accurate to recalibrate the system. Not only that, it also helps recalibrate it with the colder climates. It also helps recalibrate with like different temperatures dealing with colder weather the pressure is not going to be as accurate as it is like if you just don't recalibrate at all and then you just air up the back is probably going to sit low and the front is probably going to sit a little bit higher or vice versa or the whole car is just going to sit a little lower than before so you might have a problem where you might turn the steering wheel and then you're clipping your fender because you didn't recalibrate the system this, these are just things that you're going to have to you're gonna have to do like when it comes to air suspension you don't have to do it every single day or every single week when it comes to recalibrating the system but it is something that you're gonna have to do a little bit more often rather than with coilovers you put it at one set height and you don't gotta worry about no so this is a little bit more work it is a little bit more maintenance and it is something else to add on top of your regular maintenance with the car but it it definitely helps you get into a routine that helps you like do stuff do stuff more frequently. I'm gonna turn the heat on because my hands are cold. Now that the compressor has shut off, we're gonna go ahead and come up over here, press the middle and right up button. We're gonna go down to calibration. System is calibrate. Do you wish to recalibrate? I'm gonna go ahead and press yes. Is the vehicle on a level surface? Yes. Are the front wheels straight? Yes. Is the is the vehicle free of all obstructions? Yes, it is. Is your manifold mounted? Yes, it is. Do you have one or two compressors? We have one. Calibrate pressure manually or auto. We're going to do auto. Do you have height sensors? No, we don't. Not yet. Your vehicle will now move. Are you ready? Yes, I am. So now it's going to check everything. It's going to check the mounting. It's going to check everything else. And then the car is going to start moving. After, yep. It's gonna check the front, it's gonna check everything. It's a weird feel in the back because it's just like bouncy as hell. But we are recalibrating the system. Everything is going to be much better. It's going to air up and down a lot quicker because it is now calibrated. It knows what's going on. And then right there it says the system is ready to use. Calibration is successful. It doesn't take too long. But after that, we're going to go ahead. And if we come out. Everything should be nice and calibrated. Step out. Everything should be even all across the board. For the most part, everything is in fact even. I love it. Love it. I love it. Go ahead and air this out. Oh my god. 
it just looks so good aired out. It just looks so good. It just looks so good aired out, man. I love it. I love it. Both wheels tucking. It just looks so good. Let's go ahead and raise this bad boy up. And there we go it is now even all across the board uh, so that is basically how you do just regular airlift maintenance like i said it's really not that hard to do and it's just a lot more work that you're used to compared to coilovers or even having a stock body car getting it to error suspension is a little bit more complicated than you know just slapping on coilovers and then making sure you're even all across the board and then that's it like now we have to worry about pressure we have to worry about blowing a bag ripping a line we have to worry about a manifold going bad we have to worry about valves you gotta worry about a tank rusting out if you don't keep track we gotta worry about air traps you gotta worry about calibrating it's a lot of things that you're gonna have to do but it's well worth it. It's just gonna become routine after a while. Like every week I empty my tank out, get all that water out, I empty out the bags. I don't recalibrate, but I do try to keep a strict schedule when it comes to maintaining the car, especially during warmer climate, uh, not warmer, especially during colder climates because that's when you have rain, sleet, snow, ice, and that's when it becomes more important to keep track of all the, of all the, uh, the emptying out the tank, to do, uh, to check the bags, because you do have salt on the roads, you do have, like, ice on the roads, and since it's winter and we're dealing with snow plows and them pouring salt, it is gonna, you're gonna have potholes. You're gonna have a lot of potholes, so we do have to be a lot more careful. Like at least with coilovers, you can hit a pothole really, really hard. And then the worst thing that can probably happen is that you bend a wheel. Not only will we bend a wheel when it comes to air suspension, we might blow a bag, we might blow a line, we're gonna have leaks. It can affect the entire system of it completely. I'm not saying this to deter you from getting air suspension. I recommend it 100%. This is just to prepare yourself when you get your air suspension. Not only airlift, but Acura since they're coming back and a lot of other like um, air tech, stuff like that. You, there's, there's a lot of things that you're gonna have to prepare. I love it. It's, it's awesome, it's just so cool just having a car and then just slamming it to the ground whenever the hell you want to. Um, it It's different, it's definitely different having a car on air suspension and compared to coilovers. Coilovers look good, but this just makes it so much better. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, press the notification bell if you wanna hear more from me. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Send me a DM on, DM on Instagram or just comment down below. Ask me anything. I'm here to help. And with that being said, yeah. I'll see you on the next video. Yeah. Peace. I got my own problems. I don't want your drama. I'm chasing the commas and breaking the sweat. I'm tired of people.